Jerry Barrett, and it's nice to have you back in my kitchen again. Today I'm going to show you a famous Jewish recipe called potato latkes. I can remember my grandma Goldstein making latkes for me in her kitchen back in the 1920s when I was a little girl. And today I'm going to show you how to make the very same one. It's easy and it's fun. For those of you who've watched my videos before, you know that I love to cook with someone in my family. And today I'm cooking with my oldest son, Steve, who is a terrific cook. Well, thanks for that, Mom. If I learned anything about cooking, I learned it from you. But I have to say, I've watched your videos, of course, uh, and I'm a little curious. You are still doing this cooking. You've been doing it your whole life, and you're 92. What's it feel like to be cooking when you're 92? Age is just a number, and my number is unlisted. Well, I think we better make some latkes with that. So we're going to make uh, the potato latkes today. And to speed things along, we've done a little bit of preparation ahead of time. But potato latkes are a pretty simple recipe. You have a potato. And I've peeled these potatoes and put them in water. And you all know that sometimes when you take potatoes and peel them, they can get a little bit dark. And so if you put just a couple teaspoons of vinegar, white vinegar, in the water, it will keep them from getting dark. And then we take the potatoes and we grate them. Now, I've already grated most of them, but I'm going to grate a few just to show you how. And just as with these potatoes, there's a little bit of vinegar in this water to keep them from turning gray. Probably everybody has some form of a box grater, but you can have a food processor and do this at home with some other method, but it's really the same process. So what we do is we just grate some potatoes, and I'll just grate a few here because we really already have enough uh, for what we're going to do. And we take them out, get them ready, and again, having a food processor is nice because you can see that took a little bit of a moment. but. We take them and then we put them in the water and we're ready to go to our next step. Now, eventually we're going to fry these. So you all probably know from your cooking experience, if you're going to fry something, you can't put something in hot oil that's got a lot of moisture in it. So what we have to do is get the moisture out of the, pota out of the potatoes. And so what the process you use is you take cheesecloth, which I didn't have any today. I've got a thin dishcloth. And a little bit at a time, we just take some of the potatoes, put them in the dishcloth, kind of fold it up so you have it by hand, and then we just wring the water out. And you can see how that's done. Now we're going to wring the water out of all the rest of these, but we'll probably just do that off camera so you don't have to watch every step of the way as we do this. Okay, I'm just finishing this up. And this is my last little bit of the grated potatoes, so we'll add those back in and get them, get them all here in the bowl so we're ready to go. And as you can see here, now I have a bowl of grated potatoes. And I'll talk about the recipe a little bit, but I know it's on your screen, so you don't have to write this down. Uh, but the, the proportions are interesting because it makes it easy to work with. And that is, for each cup of these shredded potatoes, you're going to have one egg, you're going to have a tablespoon of onion, and you're going to have a tablespoon of matzo meal. Now, matzo meal is very common. You can get it around. You notice we have a box here. It says matzo ball and soup mix. Normally we just buy matzo meal, but when we went to the store today we couldn't find any. But you find this commonly too, but it's really very simple. There's two packs in here. One is a pack to make the soup, one is a pack to make the matzo balls, and we just use the mixture that makes the matzo balls. So I have here the matzo ball mix, which you can see. I have the eggs already a little bit scrambled. I have the grated onions, and again, I grated the onions just like we did the potatoes, except on the fine side, because you want them fine so that flavors get spread out. You don't want big chunks of onion in it. Now, to give it a little more flavor, we're gonna have a little salt, and I'm 
not really measuring, but basically pouring a teaspoon of salt in. It's a half for the recipe for each one. And so I'm just gonna put that in the matzo ball mix, in the dry mix, and away we go. And now we're ready to start. And we're gonna mix our mixture together and then make the pancakes. So mom, uh, why don't you give me the eggs? There we go. And we'll just pour this in. Now I'm being very scientific, you know. I'm What I'm doing is using my hands here because I think they're <laughs> the best kitchen tool. But I did wash them. Mom, why don't you hand me the matzo ball mix? And we've got the matzo ball mix here. And we're gonna pour this around and put it in there. And then the onions. And we'll put those in. And now we just need to combine these ingredients. So the, it's all well mixed. And what we do when we do this is try to be sure that it's well circulated, everything throughout. And then when we're done, and we're pretty well done here, and you can see that there's a little bit of moisture in here. Uh, and we're now going to just sort of cover them. They won't turn dry now. They have egg and the mixture on them. They won't turn dry in this short period of time. But we're going to let those sit here for about 10 or 15 minutes so the matzo meal can soften up, absorb some of the liquid from the egg. In the meantime, while it's doing that, we'll set the camera up over by the stove so we can see how we cook these things and get a great, beautiful, tasty potato latke. Okay, Mom, it's time for us to start cooking. And what we have here is some hot oil. Now, this is on a high heat. Mm -hmm. If we had a thermometer, we'd be checking it to be between 375 to 400 degrees. and Pretty hot. We don't have that, and most people don't. There's not too much oil, maybe a half inch, because we don't want these submerged. And the way we check the temperature is we just take a little piece of bread, drop it in the oil, and you can see right there it's bubbling and sizzling. That tells us the oil is hot. So we're going to put these in, and we always want to be a little careful because when you put something moist in, it can splatter a little, so we'll be careful as we go along. So here, Mom, why don't you get, get me a measure, and this is a quarter cup. And we find that when we make our latkes with about a quarter cup of the mixture, they're just the right size uh, you know, to put a few of them on a dinner plate. So that looks good. So let me take this. And we'll put it in the pan. Now this can splatter a little, so you need to be careful, as you can see. And then I usually take the spatula and just press it down a little and adjust the edges just to get it kind of round. Looks good. So it looks good. And mm -hmm. now we'll just keep adding these one at a time. Our family tends to put applesauce with it, but a lot of people use sour cream. We've tested them side by side, and our favorite's applesauce, but you just test them side by side and think about what you like best. They look beautiful. This one out, you can see it's got a nice color. Well, Mom, that was really fun. I'm glad we got to do that, and it's been a long time since I've had potato latkes and really a long time since I've had them with you. Now those look really great. Do you think even though we're saving them for dinner, I could just get one bite? I think you deserve it. And here's a bite. Well, thank you. I hope they're as good as you think. Mmm. Those are the best. They are absolutely delicious. I can hardly wait till we finish them off and have them for dinner. Thanks so much for doing this with me. You're very welcome. And I hope you people will try them because you'll love them. Anyway, I'm going to say goodbye. And please try the latkes. And let me know what you think. And I will see you when I see you again with another something good. I'll try to really make it good. Okay? Goodbye now from your happy hooker. Oh, I meant cooker. Happy cooker. Goodbye.